Good day, everyone. For Telesur, I'm Cody Weddle in Caracas, Venezuela. We're going to begin today in Mexico. That's where developments continue to unfold in the case of the 43 forcibly disappeared students from Ayotzinapa. Mexico's attorney general's office announced yesterday that the mayor's office in the town where the crime took place maintained concrete ties to the Mexican gang thought to be involved in the students' disappearance. New charges are being brought against the town's former mayor, Luis Abarca, who has been jailed since November 5th. Abarca's wife, Maria de los Angeles Pineda Villa, has also been tied to the, uh, to the Guerrero Unidos criminal organization and is facing charges of money laundering. We managed to confirm the relation between Maria de los Angeles Pineda and the Guerreros Unidos criminal group. It led to a new arrest warrant that was served while she was imprisoned, as well as 54 more arrests on organized crime charges. And for more now out of Mexico, we go to our correspondent there, Clayton Kahn. To the families and classmates of the disappeared Ayotzinapa students, along with social organizations, will initiate an independent citizen search for the missing students in different parts of the southern Mexican state of Guerrero, where the students were attacked and disappeared by local police in September. Now, in a press conference yesterday, the parents of the students said they will take up the search without the authorities since they believe the results of the attorney general's investigation have been poor. They said they will search homes, plazas, and neighborhoods, principally around the town of Iguala. Also yesterday, their legal advisor announced that it is probable that ex-Iguala uh, ex mayor Jose Luis Abarca and his wife Maria de los Angeles Pineda will both face charges of enforced disappearance. The human rights lawyer also said that there is a petition that has been at least received by the authorities to open an investigation uh, and search into military bases. This is Clayton Khan reporting for Telesur here in Mexico City. And thanks to Clayton. Moving on to other Latin American news, Venezuelan President Nicolas Maduro continues his international tour of OPEC nations and other allies. During his visit to Algeria on Tuesday, Maduro and Algerian President Abdelaziz Boutelflika agreed that OPEC should work to improve global oil prices. Both Algeria and Venezuela are highly dependent on oil revenues and have been affected by the recent decline in prices. Meanwhile, as President Maduro continues his tour, government officials say the Venezuelan right-wing opposition hopes to take advantage of falling oil prices to launch an economic coup. The hoarding of basic products is increasing as opposition leaders are seeking to organize protests. President Maduro warned Tuesday that the opposition seeks to generate extreme conditions to gain support for their plans. Vice President Jorge Ariasa reiterated that, that, that sentiment during a televised address. Once again, we are seeing the right wing trying to implement an economic coup d'etat. And just like we overcame the violent political coup in the streets last year, we are going to overcome this economic war and the destabilization that the opposition has been trying to generate, above all, last week when they unsuccessfully tried to take advantage of the new year and other circumstances to foment problems. Turning now to the Caribbean, where the nine countries which make up the organization of Eastern Caribbean states are banding together to protect consumers in the telecommunications market. With more, here's Allison Kentish. The OECS Secretariat has announced major plans to protect the rights of consumers in the nine-country OECS grouping. The move follows a mega telecoms merger in 2014 and consumer concerns about a lack of competition in the market. In the real world, both of these institutions, both of these companies, or all three or all five or all six, are interested in one thing, and that's their bottom line. The reality is the consumer um, does not get the benefit that it deserves. Word of a protection and education campaign comes as good news for consumers like Cindy Eugene who says the authorities need to let residents know that there is a system of protection in place for them. People who are in authority, if they are doing anything, they need to come out and let us know what is being done because I'm still feeling the pinch in my pocket and in terms of the competition out there, is there any competition? Cash trees vendor Peter Mathre agrees. He says what consumers need protection from most is a reduction in competition. Uh, the authorities can do more. I mean, um, 
I believe that um, we need more competition um, within this small island, not just the small island, but within the OECS. The OECS Secretariat says the campaign will include an education component, which will ensure consumers across the Eastern Caribbean islands have ready access to information. Officials say the goal is to ensure consumers in the OECS enjoy competition and diversity. From Castries, St. Lucia, Alison Kentish for Telesur English. Thanks to Allison. Going to Paris now, the newspaper Charlie Hebdo has sold out its first edi edition since the attacks against its offices. The new edition features the Prophet Muhammad on the front cover. He holds a banner with the phrase, Je suis Charlie, with the headline, quote, all is forgiven, unquote. The edition was translated into 16 different languages and 3 million copies were printed. That's more than double the magazine's regular print run. Charlie Hebdo's staff tell local media that they will continue to work despite the difficulties and trauma following the attacks. Meanwhile, while m many French Muslims call the new coverage offensive and say it stigmatizes their religion. And we turn now to Palestine where our correspondent there, Noor Harazin, has filed this report. Today in the Gaza Strip, there has been several protests for employees who did not get paid uh, for the past months. They have been asking the Palestinian Unity Government to um, take its responsibilities towards the residents of Gaza and help them getting uh, paid uh, as soon as they can because as they express, they have no money left for them to uh, leave uh, to work and uh, complete their daily work. Meanwhile, in the West Bank, tension is rising again after weeks of calmness. Uh, uh, last night, the uh, Israeli uh, forces detained 32 Palestinians in East Jerusalem and cities, different cities in the West Bank, including uh, children and teenagers. Thanks to Noor. We turn to Syria now, where over 160,000 people have died in the three-year conflict there. The Syrian government and the Red Cross are sending humanitarian aid to a southern area of the conflict where an unknown number of people are trapped. Nashwan Abdullah reports. Millions are suffering starvation fueled by opportunists who have monopolized food trade. This has caused the prices to rise to unheard of levels. These and other problems have promoted the civilian population to denounce Western back dribble groups, demanding they leave the afflicted region. Children are suffering. They are starving and have no heating and no education, which are vital rights for any child. We hope the government continues sending aid, which has been of great help to us. 1,000 food packages were delivered Monday to families in Yelda, a town in the Damascus countryside. The Reconciliation Committee is distributing the aid and making sure it does not fall in the hands of anti-government forces. I'm standing here in an unarmed area between the Syrian army and the armed groups. A few meters behind me, and after this point, there is no existence for any governmental facilities, where everybody is waiting for a settlement to end the certain conflict in Syria. Nashwan Abdullah, Telesur from Yelda in Damascus countryside. Thanks to Nashwa. We end our program today on a cultural note in France. That's where after eight years of work, the Paris Philomar Phil Philharmonic will inaugurate its own building on Wednesday. President Francois Hollande will be proceeding over the inauguration ceremony, which will take place in the heart of Paris. The building's acoustics were designed in collaboration with experts in sound design from New Zealand and Japan. Grammy Award-winning conductor Harvey will be directing the orchestra's first shows. Plenty more on those stories and others. Check it out. TV.net slash English. Sarah Begum will be back with you in just a few hours. For Telesur English, I'm Cody Weddle. Have a great day.